Hey everybody, welcome to the Command Valley. I'm your host Landon and I'm super happy to have you here. For today's episode, we're gonna be doing a deck tech on Kess Dissident Mage. Before getting into today's video, just a quick reminder to hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all of our deck techs that we release every Monday. And it's also a super great way to support the channel and we really appreciate it. Today's deck tech is going to be on Kess Dissident Mage. She is a legendary creature human wizard that costs one, a blue, a black, and a red. She has flying, and she has an ability that says during each of your turns, you may cast an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. If a card cast this way would be put into your graveyard, you exile it instead. This is an adaptive Grixis combo deck that plays a lot of interaction and a ton of mana rock since we don't have access to green. You're going to like this deck if you like wacky storm turns, flexible interaction, and spell slinging strategies. And you might not want to build this deck if your playgroup frowns on infinite combos and tutoring. So I said that this is a Grixis combo deck, which combos are we running? We're playing the generic Isochron Scepter Dramatic Reversal combo, and we've also got Thousand Year Storm in this deck that also can generate some really weird combos. We'll, we'll get more into that later inside the deck deck, but that's just what you can expect inside this list. Not having access to green means we're going to have to be relying on a ton of mana rocks, rituals, and spell reducers. So let's go over those. Our three signets can tap for any of our commander's colors. Lotus Bloom has Suspend, and we have to wait three turns, but it is basically Black Lotus. Sky Diamond taps for blue, which we need a lot of in this deck. Cold Steel Heart enters, we choose a color and it can tap for any color that we choose. Thought Vessel gives us no maximum hand size. Wayfarer's Bobble is basically a rampant growth on an artifact. Everflowing Chalice can tap for as much mana as we kick it, and Fell War Stone taps for any color that our opponents can make. We're only playing one Ritual, but Dark Ritual is an awesome card. It can help accelerate us two turns and maybe drop down an early combo piece. Then for our spell reducers, we're playing Baral Chief of Compliance, Nightscape Familiar, Goblin Electromancer, and Primal Amulet. In addition to being a mana reducer, Primal Amulet also has an ability that once we have three charge counters on it, and we get a charge counter every time we cast an instant or sorcery, it flips over into Primal Wellspring, which is a land that can tap for any color. And whenever we spend that mana from Primal Wellspring to, to cast an instant or sorcery spell, it lets us copy that spell and choose new targets for the copy. Now let's go over the card draw. This deck plays a lot of ways of drawing cards between cantrips and mass draw effects. The cantrips that we're playing are Brainstorm, which lets us draw three cards. We have to put two back on top of our library. Ponder lets us scry two and then draw a card. Impulse at instant speed lets us look at the top four cards of our library and put one into our hand. Knight's Whisper at the cost of two life lets us draw two cards. And Ponder lets us rearrange the top three cards of our library and draw, or we can shuffle our library and draw. Now for our mass draw spells, or spells that let us draw more than one card at a time, we've got Windfall, which is each player discards his or her hand and then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. Drawn from Dreams, which lets us look at the top seven cards of our library and we get to put two of them into our hand. Factor Fiction, which at instant speed can let us reveal the top five cards of our library and we choose an opponent to separate those cards into two piles. One of those piles goes into our hand and the other pile goes into our graveyard. That's also really good with Kess because spells in our graveyard are just as good as they are in our hand. Dig Through Time at instant speed lets us look at the top seven cards of our library. We get to put two of them into our hand and the rest on the bottom of our library in any order. It also has the added benefit of having Delve. We are then playing some permanents that give us a lot of card draw with Ristic Study, Mystic Remora, and Necropotence. Mystic Remora is awesome letting us draw a card every time our opponents cast a non-creature spell. They can pay four, but nobody's gonna pay four. Necropotence lets us turn our life into card draw with the downside of having us skip our draw phase and every time we disc discard a card, we have to exile that card. We're then playing Reoccurring Insight, which is one of my favorite cards in the deck. It's a sorcery that lets us draw cards equal to the number of cards in target opponent's hand and also has rebound. Next up, let's go over the tutors. We've got Dark Petition, Fabricate, Mystical Tutor, Spell Seeker, and Muddle the Mixture. Muddle the Mixture can counter an instant or sorcery, which is really nice to have, but it's actually in here because of its transmutability. For one blue blue, we can discard this card and search our library for a card with the same converted mana cost as this card, reveal it and put it into our hand. So this card is in the deck specifically to find Isochron Scepter or Dramatic Reversal. And I'll go over that combo a little bit later in the tech. We're then playing Spell Seeker, which when it enters a battlefield, we can search our library for an instant or sorcery card with converted mana cost two or less, reveal it and put it into our hand. That also can find half of our combo or maybe some other piece that we need to stop somebody from winning Mystical Tutor at instant speed lets us search our library for an instant or sorcery and put it right on top of our library. Fabricate lets us search our library for an artifact, and Dark Petition lets us search our library for any card. And if we have Spell Mastery, meaning there are two or more instants and or sorcery cards in our graveyard, we can add three black to our mana pool. We're actually going to be going over that card a little bit later with the rest of our combo. Next up, let's go over the interaction in this deck. We've got ways of killing things, countering things, blowing up the board, and bouncing things. For the kill things, we have Go for the Throat, Terminate, and Vandal Blast. Terminate and Go for the Throat at instant speed can destroy a creature, and Vandal Blast can destroy one artifact we don't control, unless we overload it for five mana, in which it blows up all the artifacts we don't control. 
We are then playing for our counter spells, Swan Song, Counter Spell, and Negate, which can counter most things that are probably going to hurt us. Swan Song can hit an enchantment in Center Sorcery and its controller makes a bird, and Negate hits non-creature spells. We're then playing Mystic Confluence, which has three modes that we can choose up to three times. We can counter a spell unless its controller plays three, return a creature to its owner's hand, and draw a card. So we can do any number of those up to three times. We're then playing Narset's Reversal, which isn't a traditional counter spell, but we can copy target instant or sorcery spell, then return it to its owner's hand, and we can choose new targets for the copy. So if our opponents are playing a spell that's going to give them a lot of value, instead we can get that value and make them try and cast that spell again. For big board states that we would need to blow up, we've got Decree of Pain, Nightmare Unmaking, Blasphemous Act, and Black Sun Zenith. Decree of Pain is going to destroy all creatures, they can't be regenerated, and we are going to draw a card for each creature destroyed this way. If we don't have quite enough mana, we can cycle it paying 3 black black, discarding Decree of Pain and drawing a card, and when we cycle it, it's going to give all creatures minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn. Nightmare and Making has two modes and we can choose one. We can exile each creature with power greater than the number of cards in our hand, or we can exile each creature with power less than the number of cards in our hand. So depending on the board and depending what's in our hand is going to depend on what mode we're going to choose. Blasphemous Act will cost one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield and it deals 13 damage to each creature. A lot of times we can cast this for just two or three mana and that's definitely worth it. Black Sun Zenith says put X minus one minus one counters on each creature and then we shuffle Black Sun Zenith back into our library. That's a super good card, especially good at getting rid of indestructible creatures. We're then playing some mass bounce spells with Aether Gale, Whelming Wave, Aether Eyes, and Cyclonic Rift. Aether Gale is going to bounce six non-land permanents of our choice back to their owner's hand. Whelming Wave is going to return all creatures to their owner's hand except for Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents. At most tables, this is going to basically bounce everything on the board. Aether Eyes is going to return all attacking creatures to their owner's hand. And Cyclonic Rift, everybody knows what that does. You can target one non-land permanent you don't control, return it to its owner's hand, or you can overload it for seven mana, returning everything you don't control to their owner's hands. Now with all that boring stuff out of the way, we can finally get into our combo finishers. This deck is running two big combo packages. The first package being what I mentioned earlier, the Icy Concept Dramatic Reversal combo, and the second package being Thousand Year Storm. If you're unfamiliar with the Icy Concept combo, it goes a little like this. Icy Concept is an artifact that costs two with the ability Imprint, which means when it enters a battlefield, you may exile an instant card with converted mana cost two or less from your hand. It then has the activated ability of paying two and tapping, and you can copy the exiled card and you can cast it without paying its mana cost. And Dramatic Reversal is an instant that costs one and a blue, and it says untap all the non-land permanents that you control. So what you do is you cast the Icy Concept, Imprint the Dramatic Reversal, and if you have at least two artifacts, or a way to generate more than two mana with a non-land permanent, you can cast the Dramatic Reversal with the Icy Conceptor, untapping all of your mana rocks and the Icy Conceptor, and you can do that again and again and again until you have infinite mana. And the way the Icy Conceptor is worded, it also gives you an infinite storm count. So that's the basic package there. And what are we gonna do with all that mana once we've created it? One of the things that we can do is we can dump all of that mana into a Comet Storm, which has X Red Red at instant speed and Multi Kicker for one mana. We can choose target creature or player, then choose another target creature or player for each time Comet Storm was kicked. Comet Storm deals X damage to each of them, so we pump infinite mana into that, and essentially we can kill all of our opponents all at once. Aetherflux Reservoir is another backup Comet Storm. It says each time that you cast a spell, you gain one life for each spell you've cast before it this turn. You can then pay 50 life to have Aetherflux Reservoir deal 50 damage to target creature or player. The way that Icy Conceptor is worded, that gets you infinite storm count according to Aetherflux Reservoir's ability. You then pay 50 life per opponent and take them out of the game. Another way that we can win the game, which I find absolutely hilarious and it's one of my favorite things to do, is we can cast a Monomic Betrayal. For one, a blue and a black, we get a sorcery that says, exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. You may cast those cards this turn, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any type to cast those spells. At the beginning of the next end step, if any of those cards remain in exile, return them to their owner's graveyards and exile Monomic Betrayal. I love this card so much, you can cast your opponent's things and maybe try and kill them with it. There's a little bit more, but that's basically the package with Isochron Scepter. It's a really prolific combo, a lot of people play it, and if maybe that's not your style, you've also got Thousand Year Storm. It's a big enchantment that costs four, a blue, and a red, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you copy it for each other instant and sorcery spell you've cast before it this turn, and you can choose new targets for the copies. One of my absolute favorite lines of play with Thousand Year Storm is let's say you've casted Thousand Year Storm, and by some miracle you get to untap with it, and you've got maybe a cantrip or two in your hand, maybe a mana rock. You cast it, cast your cantrip, and then you cast Dark Petition, which I said earlier we're going to talk about it. It says search your library for a card and put that card into your hand. Shuffle your library, when with Spell Mastery you get to add three black to your mana pool. 
So let's say your storm count is at three or four, you cast Dark Petition, you're gonna be searching your library for four cards and adding 12 black mana to your mana pool. Usually that's enough to find enough cards just to win the game right there on the spot. Another card similar to Monomic Betrayal, but works really well with Thousand Year Storm, is a spell called Spell Twine. It costs six mana, and you can exile an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard and an instant or sorcery card from your opponent's graveyard, from an opponent's graveyard and you can exile an instant or sorcery card from an opponent's graveyard. You copy those cards and cast the copies of Able without paying their mana costs. So let's say you have Thousand Year Storm out and you cast Spell Twine. You're gonna get another copy of Spell Twine and you're going to be able to cast each of the spells that you exile from your graveyard and your opponent's graveyard twice as well. And then when the next Spell Twine resolves, you're gonna get a lot more spells after that. I've been able to win games with just Thousand Year Storm and Spell Twine before, so it's a super powerful play. It does kind of depend on what your opponents have in your graveyard, but Thousand Year Storm is a big big enchantment. You're probably not going to be playing it until late game anyways. A couple more cards that I think need a little bit more explanation and don't fit super well in any of the categories that I've given. We've got Animate Dead and Reanimate, both of which can pull a creature from a graveyard and put them onto the battlefield under our control with a little bit different stipulation. Animate Dead can gives the creature minus one minus zero and Re Reanimate makes us lose life equal to that creature's CMC. I have these cards in the deck because a lot of times our opponents are playing creatures that help get rid of problematic board states or maybe can help us block and stay alive longer. They're just super flexible cards and they have really powerful effects. So I've included them in this list. We've also got Past in Flames, which is basically some redundancy for our commander because a lot of times we're going to have to expend maybe some of our important resources staying alive. Maybe we're not able to have access to Kess and we need to have access to those cards again. Past in Flames is just a great way of getting more redundancy out of our commander. We're then playing Sensei's Divining Top, which is another really interesting card with the Isochron Scepter Dramatic Reversal combo. We are playing a high density of mana rocks, but sometimes we only have just enough mana to continually activate the Isochron Scepter and dramatic reversal and we're not actually netting any mana. So if we only have two artifacts that tap for one mana or maybe a soul ring or something, we're not actually gonna be generating any mana, we're just gonna be getting infinite storm count. With Sensei's Divining Top, we can do something very interesting. We can tap it to draw a card and put Sensei's Divining Top back on top of our library. Putting Sensei's Divining Top on top of your library is not included in the cost of activating the ability. So what that means is we can tap to put the draw trigger on the stack activate the Isochron Scepter Dramatic Reversal combo, untap the Sensei's Divining Top, and do it again. Essentially what we can do, we can do this as many times as we have cards left in our library, draw our entire deck, and hopefully win with a Thassa's Oracle. That's just a really fringe case. It's just a cool line of play. Sensei's Divining Top is just a good card in the deck to keep looking at the top cards of our library, maybe drawing some dead cards. It's really nice to have. Thank you guys so much for watching this deck deck and making it this far into it. I really love this deck. I've played it a lot. I've made sure that my playgroup is okay with the shenanigans that I pull off, and I try to be respectful and not take 15 minute turns. That is one of the problems with the deck is there are a lot of complicated lines, and sometimes you have to spend some time doing math in your head, or looking at the lines, or assessing the board state, but the more you play it, the more you get a hang of it. Just make sure that your playgroup is okay with you playing a deck like this. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that button so you can stay in the loop with all of our future deck decks that we release every Monday. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I hope you guys have an amazing day.